Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, it's so nice to be here and to see you all. Thank you for coming um, on such a, I mean, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? So um, thank you for, for coming. Um, I'm Stephanie Shanikhan. I'm the Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities. And welcome to this 19th um, iteration of the Ac Access to Alumni event. So let's give ourselves an applause. So career readiness is a college priority and we are working to ensure that students have opportunities to the variety of professional pathways open to them as an RQ student. This event gives students an opportunity to connect with successful RQ alumni discuss and refine their career goals, as well as gain insights on how to transition from student to professional. Back in the day when I was an English major across the world, no one did this for me. I would never have, have known that the skills that I got as an English major would one day make me a dean, right? So um, this is, I think we're, we're trying to, to speed up that process so that you see what the different Hats are to um, a career that will be successful, enjoyable, fulfilling, um, as I have found. Access to alumni has become even more critical at a time when we urgently need to push back against national narratives about the arts and humanities and to illuminate the diverse career opportunities across various industries that are available for our arts and humanities majors. Students, this is a golden opportunity. Please don't be shy. The alums that have come here on a day like this, such a beautiful day that they could have been anywhere, they could have been in their offices, they could have been at their workstations. Um, they have come for you. And because they've come for you, please remember that, um, that they will let you know how they felt when they were once in your shoes. You're in good company. Students, please look for alumni working in the industry you aim to, to join, and also use this opportunity to explore fields and professionals that you know little or nothing about. You never know what doors you may discover. That's one of the exciting parts of networking. I'd like to begin with some thank yous. First, I want to thank our Arts and Humanities Alumni Association Chapter Board for sponsoring this afternoon's event. Your leadership this year and over the years has helped make today's event a wonderful success. So I'm gonna have my board members please stand up and say hello to everyone. So if you're on our board, please stand up. Thank you very much. I also want to extend a warm thank you to all of our alumni participants for coming out to campus this afternoon. Your time and advice are most appreciated. The university has a vibrant and growing alumni association. If you're not already a member of the alumni association, I encourage you to, to, to join, but always remember that you're our association, okay? So, so don't, don't do too much for the other colleges. Always think of, of <laughs> arts and humanities. Because <laughs> you, you, I mean, they, they will notice your, your, your skills, your talent, and they're gonna try and pull you away. Um, we can share, but you're, you're ours. Um, as well, I wanted to personally thank those alumni participants who made a gift to the college and our academic units this year. Thanks to your support, the college is creating a holistic educational experience that joins classroom learning with career readiness so that our students are well prepared for the future. We truly appreciate and value all the charitable gifts to our college. Thank you for investing in our faculty, our students, and our staff. Um, I want to also thank the, the office that, that does all of this. Um, so our Office of Development, that they're, they're standing around because they've been working so hard. It's led by Laura Brown, Laura Wave. Thank you, Laura. That, that, that keeps me on my toes with regard to um, alums. This, this is the, the, the office that, that keeps us thinking about what we're doing for our alums and what our alums are doing for us. In particular, I want to recognize Greg Schofer. Greg, say hello. Um, Greg has been at the helm of 
this event for, for a number of, of years and, and I'm, I'm just so, so grateful. Um, so, let me talk about the format. After our keynote speaker, which I'm so excited about, I'll introduce him in a minute, there will be three networking sessions during which you will have the chance to talk with our alumni. You are here today taking the first step toward your future. Please take full advantage of your time with our alums. When you, when you, um, Greg is going to give you a, 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 a sign. I don't know what that sign is going to be. Um, I don't know, he might get up here and rap. I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> but but when, you, when you get that sign from, from Greg, please wrap up your conversations and move to another table. We are aiming to provide the opportunity for as many students as possible to speak with our alumni participants. And don't forget to enjoy the food located at the back of the room. Once again, I encourage you students to meet with alumni in your field of interest, and I want to encourage you to take this opportunity to explore new areas. Honestly, at your age, I had no idea about academic leadership, but here I am, right? So um, please, please explore. Regardless of, of industry, all of our alumni have valuable insights and advice, and each of has their own broad network. You, you just never know who they might be able to connect you with. All right, so um, as, as our students are, are, are sitting down, I'm going to now introduce our keynote. Very excited. I've been excited about this since, since Greg told me that, that um, we had this commitment. Um, we now turn to our keynote presentation. It's my honor to introduce our Access to Alumni speaker, Randy Lord. He is a 1977 graduate of our college. He's one of ours with a degree in theater, dance, and performance studies. Okay, so the person who started that round of clapping is the chair of the Department of Theater, Dance, and Performance Studies. Um, Randy is a classically trained pianist. I'm an ethnomusicologist, so music is, is my thing. So let's clap for, for that too. singer, actor, and he became a lawyer when he was 32 years old. He spent nearly a decade working in New York as an actor, singer, choreographer, director, and musical director. His work included concerts, plays, and musicals, and he also appeared in dozens of feature films, television programs, and commercials with stars that included Bob Fosse, Tom, Tom Hanks, Ron Howard, Paul Newman, Jane Fonda, Sylvester Stallone, and so many more. Randy's communication skills, his ability to think on his feet, and, understanding of, and his understanding of human nature were all learned at the University of Maryland, but I'm sure that your parents had a lot to do with it too. Um, but but this, these skills paved the way for his success as a lawyer. Randy achieved an LSAT score that placed him in the top 1% of the nation and earned him membership to Mensa. He attended the University of Florida College of Law, where he graduated first in his class. He worked as a litigator at a large firm in Tampa before joining the national law firm Foley and Lardner. During his time as a litigator, Florida Governor Lawton Childs appointed him to serve as entertainment commissioner for the state. Because of his vast knowledge of the entertainment industry, and his legal skills, Randy was soon hired to join the legal team at Walt Disney World. I mean, we can ask him lots of questions about that, but, but, but maybe not. Randy retired as a partner from the country's second largest employment law firm, Jackson Lewis. During his retirement, Randy has enjoyed providing free legal services to Central Florida Community Arts and the Orlando Philharmonic Harmonic Orchestra. Most recently, Randy and his husband Steve, who's lovely and my new bestie, um, were thrilled to be on the team that brought the Pulitzer Prize winning and Tony Award winning Best Musical, A Strange Leap to Broadway. The show is scheduled to open on the West End in London later this year. Please note that Randy and Steve will be seated at table one, right over there, and after his presentation, you, connect, you can connect with them during the roundtable sessions, please join me in welcoming Randy Lord. Thank you 
so much to you. It's an honor to be here. This campus is even more beautiful than I remember. This building is four walls, a ceiling, and a floor with tomorrow inside. You are tomorrow. And your creativity and imagination will shape our tomorrows. If you think you're too small to make an impact, try going to bed with a mosquito in the room. You are not too small to make a difference if you are motivated. Now, some people say motivation doesn't last very long. Well, neither does it deodorant. <laughs> That's why I use it every day. We all need to find a way to keep our fires burning every single day. From an early age, I loved to perform for others. I used to play the piano with the windows open in my house so the telephone lineman working in the front yard could hear me play. They would call out requests. My mother didn't love that. <laughs> when my little friends and I would go to each other's houses to play, we would perform every role from Peter Pan and The Wizard of Oz in our front yards. We were our own audience. And when I got older, my motivation was my passion for theater and music. I had big dreams to become a working professional actor and musician. I was fearless because I didn't know any better. <laughs> 50 years ago, this year, in 1973, I graduated from high school and began pursuing my goal. My first big decision was to follow my goosebumps and not the money. I had considered becoming a lawyer, but I really wanted to perform. So my journey began right here at the University of Maryland, where I was actually a dramatic art major at the time. All of the courses began with D-A-R-T. So acting, beginning acting was DART 120, intermediate acting was DART 220. So essentially, I majored in DARTs. <laughs> but when classes began, I wanted to learn and absorb as much as I could. I studied hard, I listened to my professors, I got as much performing experience as possible. I got paid to work in local theaters. I played the organ at church, I taught piano lessons, I played the piano everywhere. I toured with the young Colombians, and I auditioned for everything I could here at the university. Two of the most important things I learned in my acting and directing classes were how to communicate, and how to figure out what makes people tick. Just because you can talk doesn't mean you can communicate. One of the most effective ways to communicate with someone is to understand human nature. And that was an unexpected benefit of learning how to analyze characters in plays and being taught to always observe people's behavior. Let me talk about pivoting for a minute and using those communication skills. After performing on stage throughout the country and abroad, performing in tons of TV shows and movies, directing and choreographing shows in New York, I made a pivot. We used to say, you have to be able to turn on the dime. Well, now, post-pandemic, we all say pivot. So, using the skills that I had honed, I envisioned myself having a bigger impact, that mosquito again. I still wanted to have an interesting life and a fulfilling career, but I wanted to make more of an impact in the world. Going to law school when you were 30 years old might seem risky, but a very smart friend of mine once told me that people who are willing to take risks have much more interesting lives, and she was very right. So, as the dean just said, I took the law school admission test. I graduated first in my class from law school and started practicing law when I was 32 years old. The same communication skills that helped me become a successful actor made me a better lawyer. Some say that a lawyer is just a better paid actor. <laughs> but in my entire 30 years as a lawyer, I never 
whilst a jury trial. Picking jurors requires you to assess their demeanor and body language. I would watch for signs of what they were communicating, both verbally and non-verbally. My years of memorizing scripts and improvising when things went wrong on stage gave me the ability to think on my feet and speak accurately in court. What about you? What skills are you honing that will propel you into a meaningful career? Now, some of you will have lifelong careers as performers, directors, choreographers, some will become journalists, some will become script writers, some will become human resources directors, teachers, trainers, and I'm not saying that you should give up on your first dream, but I hope you will remember that we all can have multiple dreams because our goals may change over our lifetimes. Can you imagine having an even bigger impact using your skills and your imagination? Can you imagine a dancer teaching Parkinson's patients how to walk again? Or a musician leading a memory choir for Alzheimer's and dementia patients? Or actors using their skills to reach autistic children through theater games? My high school friend, Rick Schmidt, sitting right over there, is a terrific pianist. He earned a BA in economics here at the University of Maryland, then got a law degree, then worked as a journalist and editor in the San Francisco office of the Wall Street Journal, all while playing jazz piano in abandoned nights. Another high school friend, Ray White, over there, earned two degrees, one in history and one in vocal performance here at the University of Europe. He's an overachiever. <laughs> he then had a successful singing career. He played the organ at church and was a music director at the same church for 40 years. He taught music bibliography and music librarianship at Catholic University, all while working as a music librarian at the Library of Congress, a job he still enjoys today. My husband, Steve Fessler, earned a BFA in vocal performance, and within weeks of graduation, he was touring as the youngest ever tenor soloist in one of the most renowned choirs in the country. After singing all over the world, he joined the Actors and Equity Association, and he performed in Broadway national tours in the United States and Canada. Eventually, he made a pivot, and he became an equity stage manager and eventually a, pro a producer of live entertainment at the Walt Disney Company. And as for me, my career included performing at the Kennedy Center and Lincoln Center, working on stage all over the country and abroad, working with stars that the Dean named earlier in TV shows and commercials and movies. And then after my pivot, I litigated cases for the Walt Disney Company. And eventually, I became a partner at one of the largest employment law firms in the country. I'm a proud member of Actors Equity Association and Screen Actors Guild, AFTRA, which gave me great insight to help negotiate the current collective bargaining agreement between the Orlando Philharmonic Orchestra and the Musicians Union. The possibilities really are limitless. Over your careers, you will be given lots of advice. I hope you'll remember to select from that advice just as you select the items that you need at the grocery store that day. Some advice that will be thrown at you will be pertinent, and some advice will be completely irrelevant. Pick and choose what works for you. It's up to you to choose the journey you want to travel. Be creative. Be open, be imaginative, and above all, be you. You all know it won't be easy, but I guarantee you it will be worth the effort. There's a saying that goes like this. Successful people are those who can build firm foundations from the bricks that are thrown at them. <laughs> no two journeys are alike, and where you are today does not dictate where you will end up. But all artists touch people through the arts.
with our talents, and with our hearts. The arts are the great equalizer that brings together people of all different backgrounds. You can touch people through a song, a phone call, a letter, a dance, or a conversation with a complete stranger at the grocery store. Some of us eventually are fortunate enough to be able to impact people through sharing our treasure or giving our time. Whatever the, your journey, know that you can change the world. If you want to touch the past, touch a rock. If you want to touch the present, touch a flower. But if you want to touch the future, touch a life. Choose your path carefully. Your choices can change our tomorrow. Thank you. We don't have a lot of time for, for questions, but I've convinced Greg that we can do at least one question. So one question. Please put your hand up and I will call you. One question. Don't be shy. <laughs> oh, I see Nelson in the back. Nelson. Uh, what was your favorite part of theater at your while you were here? Oh, and Nelson is a theater student, so. <laughs> That's so easy. When I was here, there was a team of playwrights who made a musical out of The Wizard of Id, and I got to play Rodney because they just happened to have a part for a tap dancing night. So it was a musical and we toured to state, but that was my most fun activity here. And I sewed my own costume because you had to do everything when I went here. So it was great fun. So you tap dance as well? Yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> what can you not do? All right. So it is now my great honor to present Randy Lord with the Distinguished Terrapin Award. This is the College of Arts and Humanities' highest honor. And after hearing Randy's talk, the recognition seems even more appropriate. When we chose him, we didn't know he could tap dance. <laughs> Randy's commitment to the arts, public service, and the pursuit of justice are values that we hope to instill in all of our students. He embodies the spirit of arts and humanities. He has championed the power of musical theater to tell transformative stories that inspire and delight. His star continues to rise, and we look forward to watching him shine as a leader and social justice advocate. Randy is a wonderful ambassador for the college and the university. I'm so pleased to recognize the Randy, to, to recognize Randy, well, he is the Randy Lord, <laughs> with this distinction and present him with the 2023 R. Hugh Distinguished Terrapin Award. Yes! 